hello dear students the topic of today's discussion is ankle fractures so it's a very important topic with regards to your theory exams and also your practical exams so what we'll do is we'll first discuss the anatomy of the ankle joint with uh, overview of the ligaments and then uh, we'll go into the types of fractures mainly the bimalleolar and the trimalleolar fracture so at the end of this lecture uh, 8th or 9th semester student should be able to describe the anatomy of the ankle joint and discuss etiology mechanism of injury investigations treatment and complications of fractures of ankle joint so in your theory exams it can either come as a long question or as a short question long question can come as describe and discuss the etiopathogenesis clinical features investigation and principles of management of ankle fractures and as a short answer question it can either come as ankle sprain or x-ray findings in ankle fractures and your practical exams can come as an examination of a joint that is the ankle joint so we'll start with the anatomy so to summarize it ankle consists of bones joints and ligaments there are three bones there are two joints and there are 11 ligaments in total the 11 ligaments are grouped into three different groups so we'll see it in the next slide so the bones are there are three bones tibia fibula and the talus so this is your tibia what i'm marking with t this is your fibula and this is your talus this is in the anterior posterior view this is your lateral view and laterally you can see the talus and you can see either the tibia the fibula will be on the opposite side that is overlapped so we can't see in the lateral view in this diagram so there are three bones tibia fibula and the talus and there are two joints two joints are tibiofibular and the tibiotalar so tibiotalar joint is between tibia and the talus so this joint is your tibiotalar joint this joint is your tibiotalar joint between the tibia and the talus and this joint is your tibiofibular joint this is your tibia this is your fibula so the joint between the tibia and the fibula is the tibiofibular joint to be more specific this is the distal tibiofibular joint This is your distal tibiofibular joint. It's a joint between the tibia and the fibula. If you, if we extend the diagram up, the tibia and fibula also has a joint in the upper end, like this. This is your proximal tibiofibular joint, but that is not involved in the ankle joint. In ankle joint, you have distal tibiofibular joint and tibiotalar joint. Then there are ligaments. Ligaments are in three groups. This is syndesmotic ligament, there is a deltoid ligament, and there is a lateral collateral ligament. So the syndesmotic ligament is between the tibia and the fibula. It's here. So in between this joint, between the tibia and fibula, there is the syndesmotic ligament. The deltoid ligament is the medial collateral ligament. It's this ligament is your medial collateral ligament, also known as the deltoid ligament. And the lateral collateral ligament is on the lateral side. This is your lateral collateral ligament. To be more specific, syndesmotic ligaments consist of four ligaments. Deltoid ligaments consist of four ligaments. And lateral collateral ligament consists of three ligaments. So in total, there are three groups consisting of four plus four plus three. That is 11 ligaments. Actually, we can go into more details and see about all the ligaments, but that will be out of scope of here. Uh, and that will be more confusing for you. So what I will do is I will make a separate PPT for ankle ligaments and injuries of the ankle ligaments, that is ankle sprain. So in this slide, in this lecture, we will only focus on the broader ligaments, that is syndesmotic, deltoid and the lateral collateral ligaments. Then coming to the joints. The tibiotalar joint. The tibiotalar joint is between the tibia here 
and the talus here. So this is your this what I'm marking is your tibiotalar ligament. It is formed between the two bones that is talus and distal tibia. It's a synovial hinge joint or a modified cellar joint. You can uh, uh, refer to your anatomy from your first year that it's a synovial hinge joint or a cellar joint which is a modified type of cellar joint and uh, the movements that are possible at this joint are plantar flexion and dorsiflexion plantar flexion is when you uh, take your foot towards the ground and the dorsiflexion is, is when you take your foot above, away from the ground another joint is the tibiofibular joint this is your tibia this is your fibula so the joint this joint is your tibiofibular joint the distal tibiofibular joint is classified as syndesmotic joint it's a syndesmotic joint syndesmotic joint doesn't have much of a movement so it's not a mobile joint it's known as syndesmotic joint it is formed between concave surface of the distal tibia and the convex surface on the distal fibula and the joint is stabilized by four ligaments collectively known as the syndesmotic ligaments we have seen this in the previous slides the syndesmotic ligament consists of four ligaments so that is present in between the distal tibiofibular joint then uh, there are some mcqs which can be asked in your entrance exams and competitive exams so if asked about the weakest ankle ligament it is the anterior talofibular ligament it is between the talus and the fibula it's a part of the lateral collateral ligament and the strongest ankle ligament is the deltoid ligament it is also known as the medial collateral ligament so if asked about the weakest ligament in the ankle joint it is the lateral collateral ligament to be specific anterior talofibular ligament and if asked about the strongest then it is the medial collateral ligament so coming to our present lecture we are supposed to be discussing about the fractures of the malleolus there are come in total three malleolus the medial malleolus the lateral malleolus and the posterior malleolus so the medial malleolus is a part of the tibia bone this one lateral malleolus is a part of the fibula bone and posterior malleolus is a part of the tibia bone okay so we have three malleolus medial malleolus lateral malleolus and the posterior malleolus and uh, medial and the posterior malleolus are part of the tibia and lateral malleolus is part of the fibula so to be specific about the epidemiology the incidence of ankle fracture is more commonly in elderly women it is due to because elderly women are more osteoporotic so the bones get damaged or fractured easily so about 65 percent are isolated malleolar fractures so isolated means it can either be medial lateral or posterior malleolus fracture so only if only one malleolus will be involved in 65 percent of the patient in 25 percent of the patient it will be a bimalleolar fracture that is two malleolus will be involved that are most commonly medial and the lateral malleolus and in only 10 percent we will have all the three malleolus that are fractured is the medial lateral and the posterior malleolus then uh, coming between the pots fracture and the cotton fracture so this is also this also comes as mcq and uh, the distinction is very important the cotton's uh, pots fracture is a bimalleolar fracture it involves medial and lateral malleolus so this diagram is an example of pots fracture so you can see lateral malleolus is involved and the middle malleolus involved the posterior malleolus is intact this one in cotton fracture we have trimalleolar that is all the three malleolus are involved it is medial lateral and posterior malleolus so this diagram or photo is an example of trimalleolar fracture so we have the medial malleolus fracture we have the lateral malleolus fracture and we can see here posterior malleolus is also involved then coming to the mechanism of injury 
Mechanical injury in 99% of the patients most commonly will be a twisting injury. So the patient will twist his ankle, will give a history of twisting of ankle most commonly while coming down from stairs. So twisting injury is the most common mechanism and fall from a height can also cause medullus fracture but is extremely rare. Then coming to the classification, classification are four types in ankle fractures. It can be anatomical, it can be Dennis Weber classification. We can all, we also have a AO classification and a log Hansen classification. So we'll see it one by one. In anatomical classification, it is classified according to the anatomy. That is a unimalleolar in which only a one malleolus is involved, a bimalleolar in which two malleolus are involved, and trimalleolar in which three malleolus are involved. Coming to Dennis Weber classification, this is a very important classification. It classifies the ankle joint injuries according to the location of the fibula fracture. This is your fibula fracture in relation to the syndesmosis. Syndesmosis is present between the tibia and the fibula joint that is here. This. So the location of the fibula fracture in relation to the syndesmosis we classify or the Dennis Weber classified ankle fractures into three types. First is infrasyndesmotic. We see the ankle fracture or the fibula fracture is present below the syndesmosis. So that is type A, that is infrasyndesmotic. In type 2, it is transsyndesmotic, that is at the level of the syndesmotic. In this type B, we can see it is through the level of the syndesmosis. And in type C, it is supra-syndesmotic. Supra means above. So the fibula fracture here is present above the level of the syndesmotic joint or the ligament. So it is the Dennis paper classification is based on the location of the fibula fracture in relation to the syndesmotic joint. So it is three types, infrasyndesmotic, transsyndesmotic and suprasyndesmotic. Now very important classification is the log Hansen classification. So it consists of two parts. The first part is the position of the foot at the time of the injury. So at the time of the injury, if the foot was in supination or pronation, that is the first criteria. And the deforming force. Deforming force means what was the force that acted on the ankle joint at the time of the injury. So deforming force. Deforming force can be external rotation, abduction or adduction. So we see in all the types the first, like it, here it is supination, here is supination, here is pronation, here it is pronation. So this is the position of the foot at the time of the injury. And the second part is adduction, here it is external rotation, here is abduction, here it is external rotation. It is the deforming force that act, that was acting at the time of the injury on the foot. So it classifies ankle injuries into four types. Type 1 is supination, adduction. Second type is supination, external rotation. Third type is pronation, abduction. And fourth type is pronation, external rotation. There is a mnemonic for it that is sad sir pab and per so to remember it properly we have sad sir pad per so sad is supination adduction then supination external rotation then pronation abduction and then pronation and external rotation this is a very important classification then we have the clinical features uh, about AO classification AO classification is uh, not very clinically useful it is for the documentation purposes so coming to the clinical feature so there will be a history of twisting injury to the ankle in 99% of the cases and there will be pain there will be too much of a swelling there will be tenderness the patient will feel pain when we touch the ankle joint there can be crepitus there can be deformity and there will be history of inability to bear weight okay patient will be unable to bear the weight on the joint then coming to investigation 
Investigations are mainly three types. First will be X-ray, second will be CT scan, and third will be MRI scan. In most of the patients, X-ray will give us a proper diagnosis. CT scan is required only if we see the the fracture is intraarticular, like we see here. The fracture line is going into the joint. So if we see such fractures, then we will go, we'll go for a CT scan. And MRI scan will go if we want to rule out a ligament injury. So in X-ray we have three types: that is anteroposterior view, lateral view, and a special view is there that is known as the mortise view. This mortise view is very important. So see, this slide is a normal anteroposterior view of the ankle, but in what we do in a mortise view is we internally rotate the ankle joint for 15 degrees. So what that does is this uh, the logic behind that is if we see normally the posterior the lateral malleolus that is this part is posterior in relation to the middle malleolus that is this part because uh, the ankle is in a position of external rotation when we uh, rest when we are in a position of rest or when we are walking our ankle or our foot is in a position of external rotation so our lateral malleolus is normally behind the anterior malleolus anatomically so this joint appears oblique in the ap view so to make it parallel we internally rotate the joint to 15 degrees so that the joint line we see here is parallel it permits better examination of the articular space it's very important so in x-rays what will be the findings in a syndesmotic injury so first we'll start with a tibiofibular overlap first we have to understand what is tibiofibular overlap so this is your tibia this is your fibula in a normal x-ray the tibia will be in front and the fibula will be on the back side so the there will be overlap in this part so normally this is six millimeter in an anterior posterior view and in a mortise view this will be more than one millimeter but if there is a syndesmotic injury this tibiofibular overlap will decrease okay then the second point is the medial clear space so medial clear space is the space between the tibia this is this part this part and the talus that is this part okay what we see here is the medial clear space the one i am circling normally this is less than 4 mm on mortise view so if there is a syndesmotic injury this will increase to more than 4 mm then the third third thing will be the tibiofibular clear space so what i'm marking is the clear space this part so we measure it 1 cm above the ankle joint and normally this is less than 5 mm on ap view and the mortise view if there is a syndesmotic injury this tibiofibular clear space will increase okay this tibiofibular clear space because the tibia and the fibula will separate away from each other and this deep clear space will increase this will be more than 5 mm, 5 mm in the syndesmotic injury so if you have a lateral malleolus fracture how can we diagnose it on x-ray so we measure something known as a talocrural angle so what uh, one thing i forgot to mention in the first slide ankle joint is also known as a talocrural joint that is the joint between the tibia and the talus is also known as a talocrural joint so the angle talocrural angle is the is measured between tibia and the talus it is measured by bisection of line through the tibial anatomical axis and another line to the tip of the malleolus this angle is uh, increased more than 5 degree compared to the normal side so we have to take x-ray of the both ankles and if the angle is increased more than 5 mm then there is a possibility of lateral malleolus fracture so i'll just show you how it is measured so this is your tibial plafond line it is it is the ankle articular surface line 
so we draw a perpendicular this line okay so this line and the angle between the line joining both the malleolus tip of the malleolus so the line perpendicular to the tibial platform or articular surface and the line joining both the malleolus the angle that these two lines forms is the talocular angle so if it is more than 5 degree compared to the opposite side then it denotes malleolus fracture so if we have a posterior malleolus fracture what will you see on the x rays there are two very classical signs that we see in a posterior malleolus fracture in x ray first is the double contour sign and second is the misty mountain sign double contour sign is this this is the what we see this part is the posterior malleolus overlapping the middle malleolus because of a fracture so we see we kind of see a double malleolus or a double contour sign double contour on the middle malleolus if this is present there is a more chances of a posterior malleolus another sign is the misty mountain sign misty mountain mist is mist is similar to fog so a very foggy appearance of a fracture like we see here this appears like a mountain behind a mist this the arrows that they are showing so if there is a misty mountain sign or a double contour sign then it denotes a posterior malleolus fracture then coming to the treatment part the there are few uh, goals that we want to achieve for the treatment of ankle fractures first is the anatomical reconstruction of the ankle joint and another is the reconstruction of the smooth articular surface so we have to restore the anatomy and articular surface has to be reconstructed very meticulously otherwise there will be a limitation of motion and arthritis in the patient so the first type of treatment that we can do is a conservative management conservative management is done in the cases of undisplaced fractures of the ankle joint so what we do is a, we put a bilony cast so this is the knee of the patient so we put a bilony cast till the toes of the patient or the meta tarso phalangeal joints and we keep this cast for 6 weeks if this is undisplaced fracture patient can very well walk on this cast this is a plaster of paris there is another cast known as a scotch cast or a fiberglass cast the patient can walk on the fiberglass cast there is no problem so patient is given a cast for 6 weeks then the cast is removed and patient is given physiotherapy so operative coming to operative management this is done if the fracture is displayed displaced or and uh, or if the fracture is displaced or it's a intra articular fracture which is displayed because intra articular fractures has to be if it's a displaced fracture or a displaced intra articular fracture then we do a operative management in this anatomical reduction is achieved the operative management can be done with the help of screws with the help of tension band wiring with the help of k wires or with the help of plating in this we see this is a screw and this is a plate other options are tension band wiring and k wires what are the indications of operative treatment if there is any talar displacement so we'll see on x-ray that the middle clear space is widened if it's a displaced isolated middle malleolus fracture if it's a displaced isolated lateral malleolus fracture if it's a bimalleolar fracture with displacement or if the posterior malleolus fracture involves more than 25% of the articular surface or the joint or if it's a it has a 2 mm more than 2 mm step off or displacement or last indication is if it's a open fracture then we have to operate it coming to the complications there can be other non union mal union there can be wound problems like dehiscence or uh, the bone can uh, come out and like a uh, open fracture there can be infection or there can be ankle arthritis thank you thank you very much